Hi guys, Mrs. Barrett coming to you from the library today. It's very exciting. Um, I have a book, it's, parts of it are a little bit challenging, um, but I think you guys can probably handle it. And it's all about Earth Day. It actually explains where Earth Day came from. So let me pull it up. You know those who is, who was books. This is made by those same people. And it's not a full length book. If it were printed, it would be a little more like a pamphlet. Um, but they created this series to deal with some questions that people have and thorough good answers. So here you go. Who HQ presents a good answer to a good question? What is Earth Day? This is read with permission of Penguin. And here we go. What is Earth Day? Earth Day, a simple, straightforward name for an event that honors our big, complicated planet. Each April 22nd, people around the world celebrate Earth Day in a global festival that acknowledges the environment and all living things on our third rock from the sun. More than 1 billion people participate. Underneath all the banners and globe balloons throughout all other public displays and parades on this day is an urgent message, save the earth. So how did this fresh air festivity with a mission get started? Back in the deadly day, the environmental movement wasn't always as widespread as it is today. Though there had been a strong need for it pretty much since the industrial revolution began in the late 18th century, by the middle of the 20th century, the effects of all of that industrialization were inescapable. In a town near Pittsburgh in 1948, a cold layer of air trapped a toxic mix of pollutants from local zinc plant and steel mills. 20 people were killed and an estimated 7,000 sickened by the thick yellowish fog. Four years later, a similar thing happened in London and at least 4,000 people died. The smog and soot that are byproducts of many industries created serious health problems and had a negative impact on the environment. Coal powered factories also produced acid rain, which harms plants, fish, soil, and forests. Car ownership doubled in the United States between 1950 and 1960. Think about that. The number of cars that existed in the United States in 1950 doubled in just 10 years. This left big cars that required lots of leaded gas parked in almost every driveway. Cars today are considered 99% cleaner of common pollutants like hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, and particle emissions than they were in the 60s when they accounted for 60% of the pollutants discharged into the air in the United States. I want you guys just to think about what we just read there for a minute. This part where they're talking about in a town in Pittsburgh, a layer of cold air trapped a toxic mix of pollutants and 20 people were killed. If this weren't a nonfiction book, I'd be thinking that was some crazy story or something somebody saw in a movie. Did you guys know that happened? And then just a few years later, a similar thing happened in London and even more people died? Yeah, you can see maybe why the environmental movement got mo going. Not so silent now. In 1962, Gaylord Nelson, a former governor of Wisconsin, who was a champion of conservation in his home state, was elected to the United States Senate. He had used his three terms as Wisconsin's governor 
to create the Outdoor Recreation Acquisition Program, which funded the purchase of 1 million acres of land for public parks and wilderness areas. Senator Nelson was passionate about changing the laws to help the environment. His goal was to get lawmakers and civilians, that's like regular people who live there, together to create a modern environmental movement. Other advocates were also advancing the cause at the time, especially scientist Rachel Carson, whose influential and widely read book, Silent Spring, sounded the alarm about the dangerous effects of pesticides. Pesticides are the chemicals that um, you spray to help try and get rid of bugs, whether it's bugs on your plants or bugs in your home, they're all called pesticides. Headline making news like Cleveland's heavily polluted Kai Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga River catching fire in 1969 showed the effects of chemical waste disposal. The public started paying attention. This paragraph re references Rachel Carson. If you look, there is actually another video with a book where I read a book that is all about Rachel Carson and how she got going with the environmental movement, if you are interested in that. Higher Learning in Action. Oh, and there is her book, Silent Spring. The 1960s was a period of great upheaval, much of it centered on college campuses. Students opposed the war in Vietnam, marched for civil rights, and raised awareness for women's rights issues. They also worked to raise awareness of the dangers of things like oil spills, pesticides, unchecked release of pollutants, and animal welfare. They held teach-ins designed to educate people on the issues and keep the public informed. Senator Nelson wanted to bring all these causes and conservation-minded people together. He came up with the concept for Earth Day in 1969. Dennis Hayes, a young activist from Stanford University, signed up to be Earth Day's first national coordinator. Congressman Pete McCloskey of California signed on as co-chairman. Together, they organized a large group of student volunteers and staff members to stage Earth Day rallies across the country. Rally cry. The response to Earth Day was huge. 20 million Americans, huge. On April 22nd, 1970, people thronged to the rallies all across the country, calling on the government to take action. New York City closed off part of Fifth Avenue to wake, make way for marchers. In Washington, DC, thousands of people listened to speeches by environmentalists and others. Congress even called a recess so that the members could take part in Earth Day. The impact was almost immediate. By 1971, 25% of Americans listed protecting the environment as an important goal. With public awareness and political pressure increasing, the government began to take action making changes. Environmental protection as we know it today really started in the 1970s after the first Earth Day rallies. Some really important legislation came to pass. Number one, the Clean Air Act. All those factories and big gas guzzling cars we mentioned, the Clean Air Act of 1970 introduced regulations that required factories and car manufacturers to control the pollutants they were putting into the air. Because we all need clean air to breathe, right? Number two, the Water Quality Improvement Act. 
Now this I found amazing. Listen to this sentence. Up until the Water Quality Control Act of 1970 passed, oil companies and shipyards were allowed to dispose of waste in waterways as long as they had the right permits. This destroyed a lot of wildlife. Literally, they could throw their trash, which was liquid waste, into a river. If they had a river nearby and they had a pat permit to do it, they could just put their trash right in there. Once the act went into effect, companies were required to clean up the pollution and find safer ways to dispose of waste moving forward. It was a good start which kept going with the Clean Water Act of 1972. Three, the Endangered Species Act. As the areas where people lived and worked expanded and spread, animals and plants began to lose their habitat. This 1973 act protects birds, insects, fish, mammals, crustaceans, reptiles, and plants that are considered threatened or endangered. Once a population of a certain species becomes too small, so like once there are only a certain number of whatever this bird is, once that there are only a few of those, then they're placed on a list that protects them by law. The list is always changing. The goal is for the law to do such a good job protecting a species that it's eventually taken off the list. Environmental regulations, however, are closely tied to economics and politics. A change in government can mean a change in laws and regulations and controversy about competing needs and interests. So one of the reasons that, say, a car manufacturer might not have originally wanted to make their, their cars pollutant free is because it was cheaper to make them the original way. Part of it is also maybe they didn't know the full impacts of their automobiles, but part of it is simple economics. How much do things cost? If it costs us more to make it, we're gonna have to charge more for it and maybe as many people won't be buying it. So see, those are some of the trade-offs they're talking about. To keep up with what's happening to Mother Earth, check out your local or state government sites, the Environmental Protection Agency, and you see the websites here, the Environmental Sector of the United Nations, and the Union of Concerned Scientists. Earth Day Today. Since that spring day in 1970, Earth Day has gone global. Its organizers now work with over 50,000 partners in 196 countries. More than 1 billion people partake in Earth Day activities each year, making it the largest civic observance in the world. April 22nd continues to be a day of rallies, festivals, and change. Each year, Companies and activists come out with new projects aimed at protecting and restoring our planet. Save the Earth. From the very first Earth Day, it's been clear that the cause is only as strong as its members. Though we've made huge strides in the last few decades, the effects of climate change and human activity have made our continued action vital. China's air quality exceeds 100 times the safety limit of airborne pollutants in 2016, while 40% of American waterways are unsafe for swimming or fishing. A rapidly warming climate is putting species at risk as their habitats change and melting coastal glaciers, significantly impacting the water's temperatures and sea level. Things you can do on April 22nd and beyond. Join in! In normal times, 
Go to an Earth Day festival. Get involved with environmental causes that mean the most to you. Check out how and where. Number two, use your voice. Back political candidates who support environmental causes with your vote if you're old enough to vote, when you're old enough to vote, or with your voice if you're not. Anyone can write to an elected representative, government official, or newspaper, and or share important articles and information via social media. And guys, think about the little things that you can do. One of the books that I read for some of the younger students is called The Earth Book, I think. I had it here just a second ago. And it talked about really simple things like turning the lights off, not using more water than we need to, properly disposing of our trash, not just throwing it on the ground. There are a lot of things like that that you can also do that help our earth. Um, I'm sure if you check out any of these websites, you will get some more great ideas. Happy Earth Day, everyone. <laughs>